Hello and welcome to Important Learning, the home for the best stories lived at CUNY Logistics University. Navigate with us through the life experience of our students and let yourself be inspired by their challenges and their achievements. Here we go. CEO. This acronym is for many a desire and line to achieve some years down the road. For our guest today, KLU alumnus Mark Roshop is the title that can be read on his business card already. And we want to know everything about it. Thank you, Mark, for making time to come all the way to Hamburg from Bremen and visit our studio at KLU campus. Well, thank you very much for having me. How does it feel being back to campus after all these years? Well, yeah, it was like, I think, four years ago that I came here the last time. And uh, yeah, it's always it's always great to come back and to, to visit Hamburg. I still have a lot of friends here. And yeah, I just love the city. So it's always great to come back. Mark indeed graduated in 2018 from KLU. He was starting here his master's in management. Since then, he has grown a successful management career and currently holds his executive position at Entelman Group, a family business specialized in furniture and real estate. We're going to discover a little bit more about what you do in your daily life. Let's talk about this company that you're holding, Entelman Group. You specifically are involved in the management of emotion, a side of a, a branch of the company or a side of the company. Exactly. That is uh, e-commerce, furniture sales. Tell me a bit about the origins of Emotion and about the company currently. Well, the company was was um, built in 2008 by my cousin and by my uncle. It's actually quite like the typical uh, entrepreneur uh, story. So he started in 2008 by selling MP3 players online in his living room. And yeah, then I think a friend or some somebody that he knows called him and asked him if he wanted to buy a container that was here in the uh, harbor of Hamburg and if he wanted to sell them. And inside of the container were bathroom furnitures. So, um, well, yeah, he said, yes, why not? And he tried to sell them online, I think uh, on eBay or Amazon or something like that. And that's how it basically started. So he, he realized that it worked well and that you can sell furnitures online, which at that time didn't, wasn't common here in Germany, at least. And, um, yeah, that's how, how emotion started in 2008 with, uh, with that e-commerce trading and basically furnitures from, from Asia that we imported and we, that we sold here in, in Germany. And throughout this 12 years, that's grown. And now you are taking the lead, bringing the company to the next level of e-commerce. I guess that since 2008, e-commerce has developed a little bit. Definitely. <laughs> but you did your first step, not really in e-commerce. You were more coming from the tourism, the hospitality industry. How was the change to this new industry? Yeah, it was It was definitely a big change also because of the situation in 2020 when I when I changed we had the situation in, in tourism with corona obviously so people didn't travel and we didn't have any business at all so there was actually no business to do and um, our other business with the furnitures uh, with emotion it worked really well at that time because people stayed home and they couldn't do a lot so everybody wanted to have a nice at home and they also couldn't go to the stores because everything was closed so people bought a lot of furnitures online and uh, in 2020 and 2021, we had a very high growth in the furniture business. And yeah, then in 2020, we also sold a major part um, of our tourism company in January. So just before Corona started. So from the timing, we were really lucky. Yeah, then we were just growing a lot in the furniture business. And it was uh, yeah too much for my cousin to basically administer everything by himself. And then we said, well, let's put the responsibility on some more shoulders. And that's why I moved from our tourism company to to the furniture business. Have you ever um, touched anything in this industry of furniture? How was starting from scratch? Ah, well, yeah, that was definitely very interesting because I really didn't have any experiences in that in that field. And um, in 2020, when I, when I moved over, uh, we also bought a company from bankruptcy and in the beginning, we had some some issues with our production there because 
First of all, we had to to stabilize the the company there after the bankruptcy. Obviously, um, a lot of clients because it was just unsafe for them. They they moved to other providers, and, um, and then we went inside with emotion and we gave a lot of our products to the production there. Yeah, that's how we how we stabilized it. And in the beginning, we also had some some problems. Obviously, with the staff, a lot of people were also looking for different opportunities and our production manager for example he also left the company then after uh, two months so a lot of challenges that we had in the beginning and uh, well yeah then i had to do the the production management for some months because like i said we we didn't have somebody at that time obviously we also had a very good team there and yeah for for me it was just a very fast learning curve that i had and very interesting and yeah Fast learning curve in knowledge, but I can totally see that uh, the learning curve probably was not so fast in management knowledge because for how you're talking already, you are talking about bankruptcy, like pulling the company out of a bad situation. So definitely there was a lot of skills that you already brought into the company and um, that you had already grown before. As we were saying at the beginning of the talk, your business card says CEO. This is a big title. Does it feel that big? How does it feel? Mm, definitely, there's a lot of responsibility, especially when you think about about the staff. And I mean, behind every employee, there's also a family. So obviously, you're also a little bit responsible for the families. With that in mind, it's, it's definitely challenging when you have to make um, hard decisions. But at the end, in the daily life, you don't think if that's a big title or not, you have your your daily challenges and your daily problems that you have to that you have to deal with and so i wouldn't say it's such a big big title but how many families are on your on your back <laughs> uh well in in the total group we have now uh, like 350 employees more or less so there's a lot of responsibility <laughs> Uh, definitely it is. and uh, But I think if you would always just think about the responsibility and what a bad decision could have as an influence for the company, then you would be paralyzed in taking decisions. So it's yeah, not worth it to, th to think about it, you know. Of course. So when asking around uh, what people envision the work of a CEO is, the answers are very different. Some people think... The CEO is just chilling in some VIP lounge at some airport, uh, signing some contracts and just attending some negotiations from time to time. There are others who think that uh, the CEO is pretty much working 18 hours a day, nonstop, taking calls, stressing out uh, every single step all day long. How is it in your case, the life of uh, a high executive? Well, I guess every case is a little bit different. And in, in my case, I would say I definitely would say that I work more than the average, but also not 18 hours every day, because on an eight-hour job a day, it's just not possible to always fulfill every every task that you have. But it's also about how you organize yourself and how good the team is uh, that that you create. So in my opinion that's also one of the biggest challenges that that you have when you are able to to build a good team around around you and that you can trust then that also helps helps a lot you have to know how to delegate to gain a little bit of your personal life back yeah i would say that's that's the case but you also need somebody where you know that you can delegate it to and uh, where you can be sure that the that the task is also done and uh, that is also very very hard to find so is your job hunting you after hours how do you balance the lifetime uh, with a highly demanding job like being a ceo so do you have like Tuesdays from six to eight, nobody calls me. <laughs> How do you work with that? Actually, I think the the work life balance for me is 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 fine. Um, when you really like what you do, it also doesn't matter if you if you work more hours. So, and in my in my case, it's also good because when I'm home and I know okay now I don't have to do something because it is really overdue and I really have to finish it. I can also really turn off my head uh, regarding to the job. So. I guess that's the talent that I that I have, and that is also really important because if you just always think about the challenges that you had in, in the job during the day, then yeah, 
you cannot recharge at home and then i guess it's also for your for your performance at the job not really really helpful i love that you bring this up uh, we're talking about the passion we're talking about the challenges i want to talk about all of that let's talk first about the challenges as a high security you for sure are facing challenges daily what would you say is the biggest challenge of a ceo I think it's hard to make a list and say this is more challenging than the other, but one thing that is definitely challenging is what I already said also before, that you have to create a, a good team that you work with because uh, I think a lot of people do the mistake, and I also have to say I also did the mistake a little bit in the beginning that you always want to try to make it by yourself uh, because sometimes you just think they don't get the job done and or they, they do mistakes and then you better prefer to, to do it by yourself. And that's definitely the wrong way to do it. And yeah, for that, it's really important to, to find the right, the right people and to motivate them and to, yeah, get the best performance out of them. And I would say that is the, the highest challenge that you have because only with a good team, you can have a great company and uh, alone, nobody can, can, can achieve that. So. And I cannot help, but. Also asking you about the biggest perk, since we're talking about the biggest difficulty, let's talk mm. about the biggest advantage well, of your position. One advantage for me is definitely that you can solve problems and you have the influence to to change something. That's for me the biggest advantage. So maybe when you're in a different position, especially maybe also in a company that is that is bigger, not in our case, I mean, when somebody comes up with, with a good idea, we also try to try to implement that. Uh, but uh, yeah, like when I work and when I have my daily task and uh, talk to different people and something comes up, it's really fast that I can look for a solution. And that's really, really nice to see that that you can change something and that the output is afterwards better. Ultimately, it's not that all your ideas have to be done, but just that if you have a good idea, you can put it in the fast lane to decision making, let's exactly, say. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking before about passion. Um, you said that, yeah, I work a little bit more than the average Joe, but I love what I'm doing. I like what I do. And so it doesn't burden me to work a little bit more. And I definitely think that that's a very good trait of a good leader, which at the end of the day, being the CEO of a company, handling a company is not only about doing the job correctly, but also you have to act as this leader and motivate your team and move the company forward. What traits do you think are essential to be a good leader? I think it is important to to find a good balance between trust and also controlling because at the end, of course, you have a company because you need to achieve certain goals and for that you have certain KPIs where you have to follow up on and especially in our production, but also in different fields, it's important to have people that also have a certain responsibility and you also have to control if, if, if goals are achieved or not. But on the other side, you should also not be, you know, too much controlled and always uh, ask them every day, and did you achieve it? Did you achieve it? So you also need to give them obviously some some space and and show them that you also trust in what they do. So um, to keep them also motivated and this balance between controlling, but also trust and giving people space and encouraging them in, in what they do and also motivate them and tell them also that, that they did a good job, which I think a lot of times doesn't happen. Um, that is really important in my opinion. How do you achieve that motivation beyond, you know, the common tactics of saying, okay, well done, good job. But beyond that, how do you achieve that your team is constantly motivated to do their work every day? I think it's something that you just show them in your everyday life when you appreciate what what they tell you when you're in a meeting and you listen to listen to people and you also engage with what they are what they want to say or the ideas that they have i think that's something how you can show people that you that you respect their opinion and and, and what they do but i would say it's just the the daily communication that you have with your with your colleagues would you say that you have developed some of those traits that make you a good leader at some class at KLU? Yeah, I mean, definitely. The time as a student was also enriching for, for the personal development here and also with the 
time abroad, with my semester abroad, and the people that I met here that have a really international background, it was definitely helpful to yeah to know how to deal with with different cultures, with different people, and different mindsets. So it definitely helped me. What did you choose in the first place doing a master's in management? You have very clear that you wanted to dedicate your life to organizing people. Um, well, yeah, before I started my bachelor's already, I, I knew that I wanted to to work with my uncle after after the studies. So I had that actually really clear already before I, I started my, my master degree. And why did you choose scale you? I definitely wanted to stay in Hamburg because I just love the city. And then I just compared the universities here in, in Hamburg And KLU seem to have a very good ranking in, in certain fields. And um, I read about it and I don't know, I think it was the Zeit and different rankings. And that just convinced me. And then I came here to to see the campus and uh, I think it was like an open day or something here and it seemed interesting for me and I applied and it worked out. <laughs> We put a lot of efforts in our open days for <laughs> everybody to be very welcome. And it's actually a really good time. We put it together uh, in our student recruitment department. So I invite everybody that doesn't know KLU, doesn't know the building, doesn't know what's going on here to do exactly like Mark did and just show up in an open day. It's, uh, it's like just a good time. I personally love the summer one. We have four different open days throughout the year. And I like the summer one because, well, if you are lucky in Hamburg, the weather is nice. But there is definitely this like summer vibe to it. Talking about events, you have participated in all the events as well on campus while you were a student. What events did you like or events did you participate in? I participated in the startup days here, which were really interesting because you saw a lot of different entrepreneurs, a lot of different companies with different stories. And uh, they were presenting themselves here at KLU. And that was always really, really interesting. And also to see the to see the spirit behind so many startup companies was also really, I would also say, helping with what I wanted to do after the studies because I could just see people solving problems in in transport and logistics, and that was yeah, I would say an inspiration sometimes when you when you listen to to these kind of people. The startup day is uh, also one of the events that we put together from day to time where we invite various startup companies, we connect them with the students. I think everybody has a good time just connecting with each other and learning the both sides of the way, right? Uh, students learn that it is possible to start your own company. Companies get to know new talent, new ideas. And actually some great work relationships have come out of this event Apart from all these events, how was your experience overall at KLU? What class did you like? What subject completely fascinated you? I would say it already, always highly depends on the on the professor as well. And uh, in my case, I really liked accounting, for example, because uh, our professor Himmel at that time, he was always really engaged and was just you know, really interesting to to listen to him. Um, because he also always brought really practical examples and yeah, just made it in, in an interesting class. And also negotiations, I think the, the class was called by Professor van Quakebeck, I think it was his name. Yes, van Quakebeck. Yes, yeah. exactly. That was also really, really good because he just has great presentation skills. And to me, he seems like a very smart, a smart guy and he knows what, what he's talking about. I mean, every professor here knows what he's talking about, but these two classes... When I think about the most most interesting class, I, I would say these two. And you also mentioned your semester abroad. You decided to go to Montevideo. Why was that decision? Why Montevideo? What uh, did you encounter there? Well, I definitely wanted to improve my my Spanish. Um, I already did some internships in Spain before, and um, that was that was the main goal. And I have never been to South America before, and we had a partner university in Montevideo, so. It was the, the right university for me in this case. Well, definitely going around Latin America for me as well is in my bucket list. So I, I make sure that I pass by Montevideo. What do you do there? Is there anything memorable that you can think that you really enjoyed while your time in this semester abroad? 
Well, from the teaching experience, it was a course that was called Latin American Outlook. That was really interesting because great professors came all the way down from Harvard and they just showed us some business cases and it was great because they were talking about cases that they made up with, for example, a case of, of Colombia. The professor worked actually together with he and his team with, with the president of Colombia to figure out certain issues that the country had at that time. And yeah, it was just great to see such big problems solved by a great and smart team like like they have at Harvard and then presenting it there and uh, figuring it, it out the case and trying to find the solution. That was, that was a great teaching experience and also um, a different kind of teaching experience with the case studies. And um, except the teaching experience, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess everybody who went to South America also traveled a little bit. And I did that as well for a month after the studies in Argentina and Chile. And that was also really, really great because the landscape in South America is just amazing. I think everybody that travels to South America also puts two to 10 more kilos with the amazing food that they have over there. So I hope that you also got to enjoy a little Definitely, bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting to the end of the interview, but I want definitely for you to share what is the most emotional moment that you lived in this campus? I would say the ceremony at the end of the of the studies when everybody came together here and we got our degrees and had the party afterwards in a great location here in Hamburg. And I think that was just really emotional because you could see all the families that were really proud of their of their children and everybody came together and you just you know thought about the last two years that you had here at KLU and that was just a very happy experience and also the next step that we took then afterwards because we finished something and for me in this case started with my with my job and so I was also kind of looking forward to the next step and I guess that was the best experience here here in KLU at the end. Families are very proud of their children. We are also very proud of all of our alumni, especially when they come back and they <laughs> share more time with us. We really, really enjoy that. So we are approaching the end of our time at Important Learning, and it is time for a last question. I always like to finish this podcast with some useful advice for our young audience. There's many people who might be listening to us who are about to start their studies or they're in the middle of their studies, given your experience as a CEO, what would you recommend the future leaders that are listening to us um, to watch out for when developing their professional career? I would say always to try to make up your own mind because when you start uh, in the job or when you get also more responsibility, there are a lot of voices around you and a lot of people that try to make an argument or try to convince you with their point of view. And I mean, obviously, a lot of times they are also right. And you should also accept what people tell you, not that you understand me wrong, but you shouldn't always believe the first thing that people tell you and always think about what people say. When you make up your own mind about something, it's also better to make the right decision and not directly follow all the loud voices that you have in, in a room and sometimes just get back for you to yourself and, and, and think about the whole situation and the pros and cons and then make the right decision because at the end you have responsibility and so you shouldn't do some fast uh, actions that at the end turn out to be wrong. So follow that inner voice, everybody. Uh, that's a wonderful tip, Mark. It has been a pleasure to have you here. I will definitely be in touch when I can redecorate my bathroom. <laughs> Maybe I can get one of your cool weird poles that I've seen at the Emotion website. Oh, they look so relaxing. <laughs> well, they Thank are. you so much for being with us. It's Thank you very learning. much for the interview. Thank you. And we say goodbye dreaming of a warm bath. I hope I can have one tonight. Stay tuned to discover more exciting experiences from our students in the next episodes of Important Learning KLD Stories. Until then, receive greetings from who has been on this side of the waves, Christopher Estegar in the technical side, and I'm Patricia Vendela. Take care and keep your crane moving. Cheers! Discover Kuna Logistics University in Hamburg, Germany 
Learn more about their offered business and supply chain management study programs at the-klu.org.